is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review and ladies and gents, if you happen to have a good amount of money in the bank, put your credit card in the freezer while you watch this because this is the Razor Blade Pro V2. This is around, well, they start now around $4,000. So what do you get for $4,000 in a gaming laptop? Well, primarily what you're spending the big bucks on here is the fact that this is relatively thin and attractive looking for a gaming laptop with a GTX 1080. So, so far, anything that's this thin, as you can see, it's very, very thin, has had something like the GTX 1060 inside due to thermal considerations, all that sort of thing. So very rare to see that. And beyond that, it is maxed out. So, you know, you could say that this price is obscene, okay? And it is, it is. But then again, if you take, say, an Alienware 17 and you max it out to match the specs here, you go for that 4K UHD display, you go for the 1080, you go for uh, large PCIe, NVMe, SSD, and all that sort of thing, it's still gonna be cheaper. It's gonna be around 3,500 bucks, but you get the idea. So that's part of the reason why this is expensive. Obviously, Razor Blade doesn't think they're gonna sell a bazillion of these at this price. It's sort of, in a way, it reminds me of what Microsoft does with Surface products. It's sort of just to show off what we can do. Say like with Surface Studio, Microsoft sort of did that. Although Surface Studio had perhaps more practical applications. That's another discussion. Anyway, they only make three products, Razor. They make the Stealth, which is an Ultrabook. They make the 14-inch Razor Blade, which is a compact but powerful gaming laptop. And then they make this Pro, which probably very few people actually buy, but everybody wants to know about. So is it all that? We're going to find out now. So finally, I know many of you have been waiting for me to review this for like months and it took Razer a long time to get us the Blade Pro V2. I'm uh, sorry about that, but it's finally here. Of course, the irony is that they're about to do a very minor refresh with this sometime next month. They're, they're now saying May 2017 with Intel 7th generation KB Lake CPU inside instead of the 6th generation Skylake that we have in here. Core i7-6700 HQ is inside this quad-core CPU, 45 watt, of course, like any respectable gaming laptop. The i7 7th generation is going to be interesting because they're finally moving over to the overclockable, the 7820 HK CPU. Uh, that's a little bit scary, though, because there is just, it, this thing does get hot. It gets loud already. And, you know, the, the overclockable CPU has been notoriously a challenge for people who do get them, like in the Alien, where we have an Alien, we're sitting right here, uh, because it does generate a lot more heat, especially when you start overclocking it. We'll see what they allow in BIOS and how much they let you overclock that beast and all that sort of thing. But speaking of the Alienware, when we talk about the, one of the benefits of this being how thin it is, now this is the seventh generation Alienware. This is actually the Alienware 15, believe it or not. It has a big footprint in terms of depth here because of, well, the way they hang the fans out the back. But you can see this one was already pretty thin and a more adult design than a lot of gaming laptops for those of you who don't like that red, black, and bling look. And it is still certainly thicker, but all metal casing here, understated. The only thing you got is the Razer logo. If you really want to chill at work and not have people see that, just get a black decal or something, put it on here. It's easy enough, but otherwise it's pretty much, again, as everybody says about the Razers, they're kind of the black MacBooks. It's very classy. It's aluminum clad. It's a nice, clean, simple design. It's kind of the Razer Blade 14 only, well, a whole heck of a lot bigger. Now, one thing to keep in mind here, it may be very thin. It is not very light. It is 7.7 .7 pounds. And it's shocking when you first pick it up because it looks so thin, you don't think it's going to be that heavy, but it's a real wrist bender when you, you feel it torquing there. So it's not particularly lighter than a lot of the competition. Now, some of the super thick, heavy, beefy things like the MSI Titan, is that is going to be even heavier. Obviously, Alienware has been going very heavy with the build, thin but heavy, so they will still weigh more. But there are plenty of gaming laptops like my own Acer Predator 17 with a GTX 1070 that weighs actually about the same as this. Power supply is even skinny. So just to facilitate the area around the plug right here, they've actually had to add a little build-up area. I suspect that that's also so if you're laying that face down to help the power supply stay cool. Because the power supply, those 250 watt, it's very ample capacity for what you've got inside. Even the power supply gets quite toasty when you're using it for gaming. Well, it's just because it's so thin. It's just not, you know, you're right against all the capacitors and everything that's inside there. And other than that, plenty of cord, the usual nice fabric cover over here on this, and your ever with razor, leather daddy man bracelet kind of cord wrap-up, cord control stuff right here. So, for those of you who have been shouting, my kingdom for a GTX 1080, here it is, a GTX 1080, 8 gigabyte of GDDR5 
X VRAM inside. That's very powerful stuff, folks. That's as much power as you can get in a laptop. And probably you're a gaming enthusiast if you're watching this, I'm guessing. So you know that the laptops now are just about comparable with the desktops in terms of graphics performance with NVIDIA 10 series Pascal cards, about 10% lower than the desktop. That's pretty amazing stuff. 2.5 gigahertz Core i7 6700HQ, again, like I said, and 32 gigs of DDR4 RAM. So, I mean, that's a lot of RAM. Most people are not going to ask for more unless you're doing scientific simulations, and then you're probably going to be buying a mobile workstation from Dell or HP if you're actually doing that kind of work. SSD options. The base model has 512 gig PCIe NVMe SSDs. It's actually two Samsung 850, uh, 950 drives rather in RAID 0. I know some people have been having a problem with the RAID 0. You can always wipe it out and reconfigure it as two standard drives if you don't want to deal with the RAID 0. I didn't have any problems with that. I had some other problems with the graphics. We'll get into that a little bit later though. So the base model, which for the generation we have was $3,700 has a 512 gig drive. If you want to go up, you can go to a one terabyte or even a two terabyte SSD. The base model for the refresh starts at $4,000 with the 512 gig SSD. As typical for Razer and a lot of gaming laptops, they use killer Wi-Fi. You get Wi-Fi AC 1535 killer unit in here and killer E2400 gigabit Ethernet. We have HDMI 2.0. Since this is a G-Sync display, the NVIDIA card is always going to be driving graphics. So usually you get HDMI 2.0 then. So that means you can even output 4K at 60 hertz refresh rate via HDMI if you wish. Ports are pretty ample. I mean, this is a big chassis, so obviously there's a lot of room here. We do have a USB-C slash Thunderbolt 3 port. Again, Razer is not supporting the core just yet. Probably their logic right now is you already have a 1080. Where are you going to go from that? There are three USB 3.0 type A ports. You've got two on one side, one on the other side. Righties and lefties will both be happy about that. Of course, your Ethernet and your headphone jack. And there's an SD card slot and a lock slot on board. So decent for a 17-inch laptop. Inside the keyboard, well, this one could be a little bit polarizing. I don't know. I love the feel of the mechanical keyboard. I'm not usually a fan of mechanical long travel desktop keyboards, but this one is just so precise and clicky. And it really helps in this case because this is a very low travel keyboard. This is 1.3 millimeters or less. So usually you don't get a lot of physical feedback when you're typing, but here you can actually hear and feel the little click of every key. It feels very premium makes typing on this very low travel keyboard, well, easier. I would still perform, perform more travel though, to be honest, but I'm a person who does a good amount of typing. Probably most people don't buy a 17 inch laptop, planning to actually use it in their laps and type on it a lot though. For gaming, obviously it's mechanical, that's nice. Again, the travel probably would be a problem. The trackpad is the biggest insult to left-handed people I have ever seen on a laptop. Now, they did this with the old Razer Blade Pro. That one used to have the trackpad that was actually an LCD and it could function and do a few other things. Now it is just a trackpad, but it is permanently positioned on the right-hand side. I'm a left-handed person, so I like the feel of the clicks of the button. Again, a mechanical keyboard kind of very positive click. It's a precision key trackpad. It works well, but being on the wrong side, I immediately switched over to my Razer Omni-Handed Mouse. One thing I do like is the Chroma RGB programmable backlighting that we see on all the Razer models. And you've got anything from color cycling to customized colors to a firelight, a starlight kind of simulation on it to some that you couldn't do seizures with. You, you get the idea. It's nice. The only thing that I'm going to complain about is what I say about every Razer, and they say it's some kind of technological limitation with the, the, the keyboard backlighting that they're using on this is that the, uh, multi, the FN keys, the alternate keys, you know, like you want to see your, your question mark, anything like that, the multimedia maskings, those are not backlit. So you have to memorize where is volume up, where is volume down, and you better be a touch typist who has every little bit of punctuation memorized too. The display on this is lovely. And again, one of the reasons it's expensive is because they give you the best parts that you can possibly get. So we have a 4K touchscreen on here that does support G-Sync at 60 Hertz. So you don't see many touchscreen laptops. The drawback is it is glossy and I usually game on a matte display myself. So you do have to get used to the reflections and glare, but 
the colors, wow, the colors. This is a nice wide gamut display, better than most displays on the market in that respect. It is sharp IGZO, which means that the colors are a bit exaggerated. They're not necessarily accurate, though you can calibrate it and improve on that. But still, it's just, wow. If you play games with this, I mean, those oranges and those greens should be illegal. They are just so bright and so vivid. It's 275 nits of brightness. That's not uber bright, but it's perfectly fine for indoor use. It's pretty bright for indoor use, obviously. And again, a 17-inch laptop is probably not something you're going to be rocking while you're walking through the park. Color gamut on this, of course, full sRGB, 96% of Adobe RGB. That means you cross over buyers who are going to be using this for Adobe Photoshop, Adobe Premiere, uh, graphics professional kind of work. It, you've got the color gamut to work with to actually do print output which is nice. Again, you're really going to have to calibrate it though because accurate out of the box, not so much. The gamma is 2.5. That's too high. The white point 7900 Kelvin. That's too high as well. But like I said, you can pretty much get it under control. Black level and contrast level, all that good stuff. You can see it up on the screen. All right, so what's inside? First off, to remove the bottom cover, there are many Torx T5 screws all the way around the edges, and then it still won't come off because you'll notice really well concealed, there are these little rubber plugs here here and here, you have to pull those out, and teeny needle those pliers work or some other pokey tool, and then there's two very small Phillips head screws that you have to remove, and then boom, the cover comes right off easily. So basically this is the motherboard and it is mounted upside down or facing upwards here because we have the two fans for the CPU and GPU and we can see the mounts for the heat sinks here. The actual heat sinks and the CPU and GPU are facing the other way on the other side of the motherboard. You have some tape here just covering our chips, thermal tape, and these are the two SSDs, M2, again, PCIe, NVMe, and we've got our socketed Wi-Fi card right over here, and we've got a third fan, which looks like it would be to blow just across all the components over here, the RAM on this side of the board, and it's going to get a little bit to the SSD, but not really so much to this one, obviously. And right here, underneath where the wrist rest area is, is our 99 watt hour battery. This may be a skinny laptop, but that doesn't mean it compromises on sound. It is surprisingly loud. It has stereo speakers that are side firing. They'll be flew by those cute little grills on the top there. Loud, full, rich. Oh my God, just really fantastic for anything. If you're watching movies, if you're playing games, the bass is actually fairly pleasing on it as well. It, it's a pleasure. And the, the refresh is going to have TH, WTHX certification for the headphone jack as well. And the headphone audio is, by the way, quite good as well. And it does have a Dolby 7.1 home theater codec too. So yeah, it's it, it, it beats out the Alienware 17. It beats out most laptops for sound. It's really very good stuff. Well, it sounds like all sunshine and puppies, right? At least if you're rich enough to afford one of these. And Again, that, that is one of the issues I have with this is the, the price is kind of crazy, I suppose. It's their halo just to show that we could do it kind of product to a certain extent. Um, it's not without issues, though. And, you know, this is actually a review unit, so this one is not a retail unit. That could be a lemon. In fact, Razer has used this one for a while before they sent it to us. Uh, I know some other people have this problem, too, but uh, latest NVIDIA drivers, actually with G-Sync, even with G-Sync turned off, uh, we had some moments with it. Trying, particularly trying to use NVIDIA's GeForce Experience to record some gaming footage for you folks. Uh, with a lot of games, most of them, in fact, we tried to do that. We would launch the game, we get to the, just to the welcome screen of the game at best, so the laptop is not heated up. This is not the SSD overheating problem that some people have had with this. It just shuts off. No, we're not even talking blue screen or anything like that. It's as if somebody pulled the battery out of it. And this does not have a removable battery, so this is not possible. And this is all plugged into the wall AC power. So it's a reproducible issue that we had and just had to give up and use the Xbox DVR instead. And even then, depending on the settings we used and whether we had a frame counter running in, inside of the, the Xbox app, uh, it too could do that. So, uh, But, you know, once we... And stop trying to record the game footage. Things got a lot better, but I know some other people have had this problem where it just turns off and some of you have returned it and, and tried to get a replacement. And you know what? I have a feeling, especially because this is a, a, a Razer review unit and that they've been using for a while themselves and sending to other reviewers, it's probably either a firmware issue or a software issue. I don't think there's anything wrong with the hardware here, but it's just a little quirky. 
The other issue is how hot and loud it gets. And this is another reason why I don't like where the trackpad is, not just because I'm a cranky left-handed person, but the battery is typically near the bottom where the trackpad is. And that's a good thing because the battery doesn't get hot. The higher you move up, the closer to the display, the hotter it's going to be because you're getting closer to the CPU and the GPU, which are the big heat makers there, along with the fast SSDs. Just, whenever it's plugged in to power, it, it will always be warm to the touch. And the trackpad will get downright toasty hot when you're playing games. It, it's just not super comfortable. The bottom reaches, well, you can see we had centigrade and Fahrenheit temperatures, for those of you who speak those different languages. And the bottom is up to 120 degrees. And the area near the power button also in the upper area of the keyboard gets about 110, 112 degrees Fahrenheit, which is way, way too hot. Now, the CPU and the GPU, I'm not so worried about those. And you can see on screen, we've got some temperature graphs here, and you can see where how high the CPU temperatures got when we were gaming. And yeah, I bet 85 for the CPU cores when gaming. So that's not chilly willy like, say, the Acer Predator 17 or even the refreshed Alienware 17, the thick, somewhat thicker, heavier gaming laptops out there. So it's going to happen. It's skinny. It's going to happen. It's Razer has only so much they can do to overcome physics here, but that's okay. But the temperatures are not really very comfortable and geez, for $4,000, you know, you, you wish that they could do something about this. But again, you, there's still, there's just nothing you can do. Physics is physics to make something this skinny out of metal with that kind of graphics card inside and have it actually be comfortable to use on your lap or not worry about it taking the finish off your coffee table. So when I used it, when I benchmarked it, when I did the gaming footage, I always put it on a passive laptop cooler. It's one of those ones that raises it up. It has a mesh underneath, so it gets a little better, better ventilation and it won't destroy the coffee table's finish. All right, it's hot. It's, it's a razor blade. It's going to be loud. Let me tell you, the fans are so loud. You are going to have to use headphones when you're gaming. That's what it is. How's the performance? It's good. And I didn't really see evidence of thermal throttling. I would say obviously in BIOS, they're not letting this thing crank too high up either because the benchmark numbers and scores that we saw were not much higher than a good GTX 1070 laptop, a thicker one, albeit thicker one, you know, obviously. And so, yeah, if you compare it to something like one of Origin PC's eons that have the 1080 in there, that's going to be a lot faster. Of course, they often put desktop CPUs in there too, which really, really pushes the benchmarks. But this is not going to be the fastest possible GTX 1080 laptop you can get. It will be the thinnest and the classiest looking. Again, that's the whole point with this. Battery life, well, they claim around four hours and, you know, it's going to be running on the GTX 1080 all the time. There's no NVIDIA Optimus here. So if you're hoping for Alienware-like battery life, particularly with their, with their Optimus equipped models, not so much. It has a 99 watt-hour battery, which is the same as in the Alienware 15 and the Alienware 17. That's the largest you can actually put and still be allowed to carry it on an airplane, for those of you who wonder what that rule is. So yeah, this is not something that you're going to be using unplugged. Typically, I saw about three and a half hours to three and three quarter hours doing light work and streaming video. So they're, they're pretty spot on there. So there you have it, the Razer Blade Pro. Again, soon to be refreshed with Intel seventh generation CPUs and an overclockable CPU with it, which is, it's going to be a little terrifying to think of what the thermals are going to be like, since this is already pretty hot and pretty loud. But um, would I buy one of these? Oh, no, 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 I wouldn't. It's, it's just a lot, a lot of money. It's too much money for me, especially for laptops. Even if you have an external GPU connection, this does have Thunderbolt 3, though they're not supporting the core of this yet. They might in the future. It's Laptops just do age, so I, I personally wouldn't. But I know there are those of you out here who are gaming enthusiasts par excellence or even pro apps users, and you don't want one of those goofy, out-there-looking gaming laptops. At least that's how you feel about the way most gaming laptops look. So... I suppose there's a market for it. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and thumbs up if you like this vid.